Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to review CT imaging of the cervical spine. This is an excerpt from a broader course on cervical spine imaging. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. So as I said before, the MRI scan is probably the single most valuable study to look at the cervical spine. But it's got a big weak spot, which is that it's not very good for looking at bony anatomy. That's where the CAT scan comes in or the CT scan comes in. If you look at this picture, for example, here, this is a sagittal sequence through the cervical spine on a CAT scan. So this is a slice, like somebody standing up facing us. This is a slice right down the middle. You can see the spinal column here, the vertebral bodies. Again, this is C1 and C2, and then three, four, five, like we had looked at in the last chapter. This is the stack of blocks themselves. But you notice a couple things. You can't really see the discs that well. You just see where the discs are supposed to be. You also really can't see where the spinal cord is. You can just see kind of where the spinal canal is. I mean, you see the gap where the spinal cord should be, but it doesn't show you very well the spinal cord itself. However, it really shows you very well what the spinal bony anatomy looks like, and that's the strength of this study. So if you were to take this single slice and take a slice through it right here at C45, you would get an image that looks like this. So this is, again, an axial sequence. Here we're looking at the vertebral body in the front, Here's the lateral masses, here's the lamina and the spinous process. You can just catch a little glimpse of that on this slice here. Those are all structures we talked about in the first chapter. Right here you can see, here's that triangular shaped spinal canal. That is where the spinal cord sits. Can't see the spinal cord, but you can see where it goes. But you can really see very well what the spinal anatomy looks like. These are high resolution images, and if you take one up very high, for example, you get an image that looks like this. Here's the C12, here's the lateral mass of C1, here's C2, what's called the odontoid process. You can get really clear pictures of what the bony architecture itself looks like. Now, similarly, you can take a coronal slice through a CT scan, and these are almost always available. They're not always available for an MRI. Coronal sequences, most of the time, are available for a CAT scan. So again, this is a slice like this through the middle. This is a slice kind of like this, and it gives you a picture that looks like this. Here you can see the left and right symmetry, so the left would be here, the right would be there. You can see all the structures, and if you were to work your way through it and really do it as a series of slices, you get a picture that looks like this. So here you can see the sagittal sequences marching kind of from right to left. You can look at the joints over here. Here, these are the lateral masses that we talked about. Slide through it, see some other structures. Here's the vertebral bodies, here's the spinal canal over there. Similarly, this is the sagittal sequence with slices. You can get the same on the coronal sequences. You can slide through them and look at the vertebral bodies in the front. You can see the lateral masses and stuff on the sides. Really understand what the bony anatomy looks like by stacking up all of these slices and evaluating them. This is most of the time how your surgeon will look at these images. Now, if you were to look at abnormal studies, so those were all normal images, but here's a couple examples of abnormal pathology. Here's a sequence in somebody with ankylosing spondylitis. This here, you can see these bones have all kind of fused themselves together. People have what they call colloquially uh, bamboo spine with ankylosing spondylitis. It's very brittle and somebody has a fracture right there and you can see that discontinuity is not normal. That big arrow is kind of pointing right to it. Similarly, if you look at this person, they had an unfortunate fracture in the C5 vertebral body. So that's this right here. You can see usually the bodies, the vertebral bodies themselves are rectangular in shape. This one unfortunately is fractured and parts of it are actually encroaching on the spinal canal here. That's an unfortunate thing that can cause pretty severe spinal cord injury, unfortunately. But then not everybody has to be traumatic. You can often find people, this is a CAT scan through somebody with just advanced degenerative disease or cervical spondylosis, like this chapter, this curriculum is all about. When you look at it here, you can see the disc is a bit worn out at the C4-5 level, at C5 and C6. You can see that there's almost no disc at all. There's some reactive osteophytes, these kind of little bone spurs that are in the front of it there. So really what CT scans are good for and what these studies are designed to show, what I was trying to highlight with some of these pictures is that it is excellent for looking at the bony anatomy. It's not not great for looking at soft tissue structures. You can barely see the spinal cord and spinal nerves and stuff on these. But together with an MRI scan, it gives you a very complete picture tomographically of what the cervical spine looks like. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.